All right, it is June. There is so much coming out. This is going to be a great month. We're going to fully catch up on things. We're going to start doing individual episode reviews again. I just put out my Acolyte review. We have House of the Dragon coming back on Sunday. We got the boys coming back literally in uh, like, a, what, like a few hours. And then we got the bear. Oh, it's going to be such a great month. I cannot wait to just uh, go ahead and start it. So let, let's just uh, let, let's see what else is in store. Oh, wait, what, what's that? What's that? Oh, um, yeah, Boys Season 3. Yeah, I watched it. Oh, yeah, you're right. I didn't do a review for that one. I probably should get round to that. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll probably go ahead and... Oh, yeah, I'll, oh, yeah, Gen B. Yeah, I should probably also go ahead and review that. You're telling me I haven't reviewed either of those shows? Um, all right, uh, let, let's go ahead and fix that. Hey guys, it's Kevin again, and yes, as we know, uh, The Boys are, is coming back, like, relatively soon, and by relatively soon, I mean it's, like, midnight right now, it comes out at 3am for me, by the time this video will up, season 4 will already be out, um, but, uh, either way, uh, you know, I, I'm very excited for season four, but it hit me that, oh my god, I have not reviewed seasons three of The Boys or season one of Gen V, so we probably should just go ahead and, and do that. So, I'm gonna start off talking about The Boys Season 3 here, and look, I'll say this right off the bat, I don't know why it took me so long to review this season. I watched Season 3 when it came out, I finished it, I fully intended to do a review, uh, you know, not long after watching it, and I just didn't. I don't know why, don't ask me, I just, for whatever reason, I didn't do a review, and then it just got to a point where it's like, well, Gen V's coming out, maybe I'll do my review then, and then I watched two episodes of Gen B and then didn't finish that, so I literally haven't reviewed it until now. It, probably a good time to finally go ahead and do that, but yeah, I mean, we'll just get into right now. Uh, I was very hyped for this season. The Boys is absolutely one of my favorite shows on television right now, as I'm sure it is for many people, but really, it's just, it's asserted itself as one of those shows that does a great job of deconstructing familiar tropes that we've seen in superhero shows, and, you know, really turning it on its head and bringing it to reality, but also slowly turning into this sort of social commentary on our world and kind of, you know, uh, different topics that have gone on and how kind of, uh, using superheroes as a way to kind of, um, reference things that have gone on within our world and, you know, have all these insightful ideas. And it seemed like season three was just going to push that even further. And, uh, look, I will say this right now, uh, season three absolutely delivered in the way that I was hoping it would. This is yet another fantastic season uh, of The Boys overall. There's so much that the season does so incredibly well, but also really taking the characters to new heights in ways that the show really hasn't before. So we're just going to go ahead and get right into it. Um, hi, apologize for the automatic drop in audio quality, but I don't know how I didn't preference this in the video, but I will preference it now. Full spoilers for both the boys and Gen V moving forward. I have a lot to say about both of them, and I just don't think there is a way for me to go about doing this without just diving fully into spoilers. So yeah, I'm saying it now, uh, just so when you watch the video and you haven't seen either season, uh, you don't feel like I ruined it for you. Uh, yeah, full spoilers for both. So yeah, just be warned. Now, I will let you guys know right up front, there's a lot to talk about in this season. I'm not going to talk about every single thing that goes down just because we're talking about two seasons of television here. If I, you know, if, if this was a just a review of The Boys Season 3, I would go super in-depth. I would talk about everything that happens because this is a very... There's, there's there's a lot going on this season. There's a lot of different plot lines here, um, and I feel like the show continues to just kind of get more dense as it goes along, and that's not at all to the detriment of the show. I like the fact this show is super character-driven, but because there's so much going on, uh, I kind of just have to pick and choose what I want to talk about, so I'm going to try to talk about everything as much as I can, just maybe not as in-depth as I would have gone if this was a full season review, um, but we're just going to go ahead and get right into it. 
So I think the first thing I really want to talk about with this season is the way things start off. Because, you know, this is a show that is pretty much all about, especially after this season, you have all of these characters that are constantly going after each other. They have this goal in mind. You know, you have the soups that are just continuing to wreak havoc with very little consequences. And then you have the boys who are trying to go up against them to fight for the greater good and turn things around. But we've seen throughout the show how self-destruction Destructive, uh, these characters really are and how this goal is really pushing them to become their worst selves and this season expands upon that idea even more so. That's why it's so interesting that the season starts off with many of our characters in the best place we've ever seen them in. Take Butcher for example, someone who usually is so incredibly selfish and fixated on his goal and you know kind of uh, prioritizing that over everything else actually seems to be making some legitimate progress in the beginning of this season. He has a good relationship with Ryan, the two of them, you know, he really is starting to become a genuine uh, father in his life. It seems like things are really working out there. Uh, he's no longer killing soups. He's just detaining them due to, you know, working with Newman and things like that. And, you know, there's this great moment in episode one where you have Mallory, someone that usually is like heavily chastising him and not approving of his behavior, actually commending him on how much he has turned things around and saying that he's making, you know, a genuine effort to, you know, listen to her advice and actually try to better himself. And I knew the second that she said that, that he was just going to backslide somehow because, listen, this is Butcher. He can't resist. Once he hears of an opportunity to kill Homelander or something that's going to defeat him or something that's going to bring him further and further to, you know, his vengeance and, and pushing him, you know, further into this role of, like, being the, the person that, you know, destroys Homelander and takes down the soups, he's going to take that opportunity and, well, enter Temp V, which really was such an interesting idea for this season. I love the idea that there is this temporary, um, you know, there is this temporary serum out there that basically when taking it, it, it you know, uh, for a short period of time gives you your own superpower. So Butcher's kind of in, in you know, an effort to take down Homelander. He kind of has to become the thing that he hates the most. And he does become a soup in this season, but he's constantly justifying it. And you can see that he's doing whatever he can to try to get others on board. And that really just speaks to the kind of manipulator that he is, but also how much we understand why Butcher is doing this. He still feels that there is justice that needs to be done. He, you know, he's pissed about the fact that Beck is dead. He's pissed about what Homelander's done to him and ruined his life, but he also, I think, just can't help himself. I don't think Butcher could ever just sit back and relax. I think that he wants to get in on the action. I think he wants to kill. He doesn't want to hold back anymore, and I think we see that in this season, and it really works for this character. You know, I think in a lesser show, this would have felt like a character regressing, but that's always been Butcher's character. It's always been about him continuing to worsen as the show goes on, and we see him really at his, and you know, a season that starts him at his best crescendos into him making probably his most questionable decisions, his most unethical choices he's made in the show to date. And I think we really do get to see that here. Uh, and I think that's something they did really well with Butcher this season. And the same goes for Huey, who, you know, he starts off and it seems like he is generally doing pretty well. Him and Annie's relationship is really working out. He's working alongside Newman, someone that he's has this genuine bond with, but very early on in this season, he finds out about what she did and, you know, with exploding all the heads and things like that. And I like that right off the bat, he finds this out in episode one. This is not something that they draw out throughout the entire season. I expected him to find out in like episode four or five, but no, right in episode one, he knows oh my god, Newman's the one responsible for that massacre that happened. Newman's the one that's behind it all. Immediately, I think this is something the show does really well. I thought we were going to have an entire season of the boys working alongside Newman, only for them to discover Newman's betrayal and the fact that she also is this soup. I thought that was going to be what most of this season was, but immediately in episode one, we find out that her real name is Nadia. We, you know, uh, Huey see, you know, hears about what's going on, but also literally sees 
sees her exploding somebody's head and makes the connection and immediately we have our inciting incident for the season and again that's just an example of what this show does so well subverting your expectations but also going in these directions that uh really just end up helping the season become that i i think you know by not going in that direction uh, it helps keeps the sh it helps keeps the show fresh and exciting and really just heightens the momentum of the season very well knowing already you know what these characters know and really just making it so you know anything could really happen Huey's now at this point in his life and then immediately starts to regret it and we just see how that leads him down the path that he does this season what does he do he goes back to butcher even though he doesn't really want to he does because him and butcher just have that sort of understanding butcher, butcher does end up pulling huey in and huey also ends up obtaining the uh con this you know temp v and but what i also like is that even though butcher can be this very manipulative person who is always you know getting people into these really dangerous schemes he even doesn't want Huey to, you know, obtain this V24. He doesn't want Huey to um, have to, you know, have anything to do with it. But Huey just can't resist. And you really do kind of see that this season. I thought they did a really good job with that. And the way this season explored that idea, I thought was so interesting to see. From the beginning, you can see that Annie especially is like very skeptical of this. She doesn't really like anything that's going on there. But Huey is so tempted by this idea of him having these powers that you just see him kind of um, giving into it. And it was a really interesting take on this addiction of sorts that he slowly become, you know, him slowly becoming addicted to it. I thought they did a really good job with that in this season. I really enjoyed the, the directions they took his character. And while Huey does get some really great, sad, you know, satisfying moments that push his character forward, you really do see him this season at his worst when he is with Butcher. These two, you know, they have this relationship of sorts, but it's it's not at all a positive one at this point. I mean, Butcher's absolutely the person most responsible for destroying all the lives of the people that he cares about most, and uh, I think we really do see that front and center this season. I once again can't believe I forgot to bring this up, but something I think that this entire show has done a really great job with is showing the char a character like Butcher and a character like Homelander and seeing these two at odds with each other, but also really showing how similar the two of them really are. And they do that the most and I feel like this season does that the most out of any of them. I mean, they really just do a great job of drawing the parallels between both of these characters. Both of them are people who are have just pushed people to their absolute limits and end up uh, losing a bunch of people as a result, but also can't help but give into their worst possible qualities. It's just one is far more destructive than the other, but they're both very similar in the sense where these are both people who are entirely selfish and have their own sort of goals in mind, and I think the show has done such a great job, you know, throughout, at first, making it seem like Butcher is, like, the good guy here, and obviously, compared to Homelander, he definitely is, but... I think when watching the season, you can really see that, like, at the end of the day, both of them have their own terrible qualities, and we really do see that even more so this season. I also really like the way they handle the team this season. I mean, we've been seeing it throughout, you know, the entirety of the show, but I feel like as the show continues to go on, the boys starts to become a lot more... Uh, there, there starts to become a lot more division within the boys as, as a team, and we really get to see more of that this season. You have someone like Mother's Milk, who is fully retired in the beginning of the season. He doesn't, he's, you know, he's, le he's put that life behind him. He's fully focused on trying to raise his daughter and just trying to be the best possible father that he can really be. Um... You know, he's getting along with his ex-wife and things like that. Things seem to actually be going really well with him. You have Frenchie and Kimiko, who, uh, they're kind of off, they're working with, with Butcher, but you can see that Frenchie is getting annoyed with what's going on. And I like the way they handled his arc this season, where... You know, throughout the, throughout the season, he's getting more and more disgruntled with Butcher and what he's really doing, and... 
eventually ends up cracking in the finale. I'll talk more about that later. But, um, you know, you have those three characters and then you have Huey and Butcher and you can just see throughout the season the division between all of them I thought was just so compelling to watch because these characters are really just trying to live their lives. They're trying to do what they can to better themselves and Butcher is actively harming them, for, is actively preventing them from doing so. And so I like that throughout this season, they're not really on the same page here. You have Butcher and Huey who are fighting for their own sort of, you know, goal. And then you have uh, M.M., you know, Kamiko, Frenchie, and kind of Annie who really is much more on their side this season. We'll, we'll talk about that more, obviously, a little bit later on, um, but... I like that you have, you know, these characters really just kind of butting heads. They're not on the same page, and as a result, things are not turning out nearly as successful as, as they really should because they can't seem to put those aside. They can't seem to find that common ground, and you kind of do... You, you blame Butcher, but you also understand why Butcher is doing this because in his mind, this is the only way this is going to work out. This is the only way they're going to be able to, you know in this once and for all, they've had this goal, why not just try to do this? You understand he's also doing it for his own selfish reasons, but you also kind of see it as, like, he sees this as, this needs to happen, this is the only way it's going to get done, or you have Mother's Milk, Frenchie, and Kamiko, where it's like, well, we've tried things out, and they haven't really worked, what makes you think this will? So you can see the division there, you can see why the, you know you understand all their perspectives and i think they're doing a really good they've, they've done a really good job with that throughout the show but even more so this season i really enjoyed the way all of that uh turned out now, of course, we can't really talk about that side of things without Huey and Butcher's plan without really talking about the inclusion of Soldier Boy, who, my god, what an amazing addition to this show this character really is, because basically Butcher finds out very early on this season that there was this uh, old superhero team known as Payback. Uh, they were, you know, a group in like the 70s that has since disbanded, and the leader, of course, was Soldier Boy, and he has mysteriously died died however we find out he's actually been like cryogenically frozen and things like that um and he is basically the most powerful superhero or once was the most powerful superhero and Butcher kind of convinces Huey that this is going to be their weapon. They need to use Soldier Boy as the thing, as the person that may finally apprehend Homelander once and for all and put a stop to him. And you can see from the beginning just how flawed of a plan this really is. For one... They don't know Soldier Boy. They don't have any previous knowledge of him. They don't understand, you know, what he's really capable of. And because of that, you know, they, they don't really know his history. They don't really know what he's been up to. This is literally just Butcher has a conversation with Maeve. She brings up Soldier Boy and Butcher, you know, has this idea that, hmm, maybe even though I've, you know, kind of been leading this life, maybe I should put that aside to try to take down Homelander. Maybe this is the way that can really happen. Um, and, you know, you know, you can see immediately that this is a very flawed plan, um, but and especially the fact that because of that, they don't know what he's fully capable of. And while we see pretty much from the beginning that he's incredibly dangerous and not really someone that they should try to work alongside, but because they are so focused on this idea that he's going to be their weapon, he's the person that's going to subdue them. They've been looking for someone to, to team up with and take down Homeland or someone that is as powerful as him. Maybe Soldier Boy can be the one to do it. And what I think this season does really well is kind of this idea that just because you want something to happen, it doesn't mean it's going to happen. And that's a lot of what this season is focusing on. They want so badly for Soldier Boy to be this, you know, to, to be this vessel to take down Homelander. He's going to, you know, be the solution. They want to get that moment, you know, they, they both think that that's going to happen, but we see throughout the show, that's just not the case. And can I just say, Jensen Ackles is amazing in the show. He fits right in with the, uh, just really dark and twisted humor of the show, but also the playing once again, just one of the most, uh, absolutely despicable characters we've ever 
ever seen in this show. Um, I especially enjoy when Soldier Boy is referencing, you know, things that have happened since he's been dead and, you know, saying things that really shouldn't be said anymore, whether it's racially charged insults or, you know, talking about, you know, saying really misogynistic things. I think he just fully leaned into all of that, and I thought he did a really good job, but also showcasing that he has this mission. He wants to get his team back together, seemingly. that That's, that's his main thing, is that he wants to reunite all of them. He also has a bit of animosity you know he he has some unfinished business when it comes to those characters and i think the moment where he reunites with one of his former teammates who wants nothing to do with him and ends up killing her that's the moment we knew oh this is not gonna go well at all and i thought they just did a really good job of implementing that character showing just how you know mutually dangerous he is even more so compared to homelander because they don't know what he is really you know what he can really do what he can really you know what kind of destruction he can end up causing um and so i think they did a really good job at uh utilizing him in this season really getting into his backstory but also getting you to understand just how much he is over complicating things for all these characters i thought they did a really good job with that and the way that gets muddled throughout the season where even after they find out that soldier boy is making this full-on like hit list of all the people from his old team that he wants to go after including black noir huey and butcher still give him this ultimatum where it's like all right you can do that as long as you add homelander to it and then the revelation of him not wanting to kill homelander because it turns out that homelander might actually be his son is an amazing idea it really just shows that despite the fact that he has this deal with butcher and huey he's clearly in it for himself and this is something that like annie and mother's milk take note of that like this guy is not to be trusted this is not somebody we want on our side but yet they're constantly trying to justify it and you see how much murkier that gets throughout the season but also really makes you that much more worried about what is soldier boy really going to do what is his real plan here is he actually sincere with what he's saying to huey and butcher and you become more doubtful of his trust as the season goes on and I thought that they just did a really good job with that uh, here. And how even after certain characters like Kamiko is almost killed um, through them trying to, you know, uh, recruit Soldier Boy and them trying to awaken him from, you know, where he was, um, you know, even after all of that with her being in the hospital most of the season and you know, wanting to basically just get out of this and run away to Marseille with, with Frenchie, uh, Butcher still continues down this path, and that's what makes him such a interesting but also such a uh, a character that you you, you want to hope he's going to do the right thing you want to hope he's going to turn his life around but you see him throughout this season just continue to worsen things for everybody around him whether it's what he does to his team whether it's what he does with ryan where it seems like they're doing okay and then he lashes out at him uh you just really see how you know he continues to go down this self-destructive path not really seeming to care much about the consequences and we really see that throughout this season pretty heavily but i also love what the inclusion of soldier boy means for so many of these characters i, I think they could have easily just thrown him in there and simply just have him be we want him to be this weapon but he's anything but a good you know a, a good ally to have and instead made it a much more personal story, especially for Mother's Milk. I love what they did with him this season, where we find out that uh, Soldier Boy is responsible for killing many of his ancestors and really cause, you know, is, is a big reason why he has the hatred for uh, soups that he really does and it gets you to understand his character in a way we haven't been able to see before and also gets you to fully understand why despite the fact he doesn't want to be a part of this team anymore he does get pulled back into it because he feels that he needs to you know he he needs to at least try to you know come at he he needs to at least try to uh you know get vengeance for his family and it's a really noble cause and in that way you kind of do see mother's milk as maybe the most good person in the entire show um and i think they do a really good job with that in this season really just uh the 
develop the the way they have uh you know uh developed his character and the directions he ends up taking this season are just really well done i love the monologue he has with annie in episode six where like he really goes into his justification for why he's doing this and the hatred that he has and what this really did to his family i mean all of that is just incredible and you know, I've always been a fan of Laz Alonzo, but I think he was just fantastic this season. I really loved what they ended up doing with him here. Now, on the soup side of things, this is where we really get into the exciting stuff for this season because, my God, I mean, you want to talk about just some of the most batshit stuff we have seen on this show yet. Look no further than what they do with everything going on with the Seven, but specifically with Homelander, who I have always praised Anthony Starr in this role. I think he is just absolutely phenomenal in in portraying this absolute psychopath under the guise of the most, uh, you know, noble and powerful superhero out there. But this season, he absolutely gives his best work I have seen from him yet. And I don't know what it's going to take to get this guy, like, awards recognition, um... But I'm shocked that this season didn't do it because we really see a Homelander who, after everything that happened in season two with him dating a Nazi, you know, with him falling for a Nazi and how everyone is responding to it, really just cracking under pressure the entire season. It seems like the littlest thing throughout the, you know, throughout this entire season, it seemed like the littlest thing can set this guy off at any point. And he is just this uh, absolute loose cannon. And it is horrifying to watch and star just does such a great job of fully leaning into all of the detestable all of the um monstrous uh behavior we've seen from uh from homelander so far and amplifying that to a whole other degree but also giving us these dimensions to homelander this is easily the most fleshed out he has ever been we see how insecure he is we see how hard it is for him to keep it together how even when he's trying to still be that you know regular superhero that people are looking up to it's becoming harder and harder for him to do that his uh you know real self is is starting to to really come through and I mean after this season I, I don't think there's any debate whatsoever for Homelander where Homelander lands on like the pantheon of like the greatest villains on TV right now he he's absolutely at the top because everything they do with him this season is absolutely phenomenal I just found myself so weirdly attached to this character despite the fact that like you coil at every time that he's on screen you're constantly like clenching your fists every time he's on screen not knowing what he's going to do but yet you're so drawn to this character and that's what the best villains can do they can equally repulse and scare you and, and intimidate you but also they can fascinate you and I think that's what they do with Homelander this season but the moments in episode two where he uh is trying to at first convince this girl to not jump off a bridge and then basically like can and then basically forces her to do so holy shit we saw a so much more savage and so much more just unhinged side of homelander than we really ever have before and from that point forward i mean this is easily the nastiest portrayal we have seen of this character so far and Thank God for that, because it's also easily the strongest element of this entire season. Because you can see he is doing whatever he can to maintain control this season. Annie, um, you know, very very early on the season, uh, we are told by Stan by Edgar that uh, Starlight is going to be working alongside Homelander, and they're going to be co captains. And immediately, Homelander tries to gain control when Starlight is, you know, even though he's being told that Starlight has the upper hand. He's the one that gains control. He goes on this whole tirade of sorts, uh, you know, talking about how he's indestructible and he's, you know, he he's the most powerful one of them all and that he, you know, nobody should, um, you know, nobody should, everybody should bow to him and things like that. And, you know, the crowd just completely eats it up. They see Homelander as... Um, you know, someone who is speaking his truth and things like that. And, you know, really leaning into that, like, dictator side that it feels like we've been, ed you know, 
inching closer to every season. We really get to see that here. But then, oh my god, uh, there's a point where Starlight ends up filming him publicly admitting, you know, what he's done to Maeve and holding her hostage and things like that. And he tries to bounce back from that in just telling them that, you know, Starlight's coming up with lies. And you can see how hard it is for him to hold that together. There's a point where it seems like he's going to be brought down by Newman, but yet he makes this deal with Newman and and she frames uh, Edgar for his crimes, who uh, that was such a uh, shocking moment. There's that moment where Starlet's former boyfriend uh, comes into the picture and it seems like he's going to maybe find a way to overthrow Homelander. And what, it, what happens? Homelander kills him right then and there and basically uses this as a way to further control Starlight from ever trying to expose him or trying to do anything that is going to set him off. I mean, this guy is just doing everything he possibly can to cover his bases and you can see how increasingly harder it is for him to do so this season. And I just thought that they did such a great job at uh, fleshing that out here. Like I said, I think Anthony Starr is absolutely the highlight of this entire season. What he does with this character, the dimensions that he brings to it, a lesser actor wouldn't, you know, I, I feel like many actors just simply would not be able to do. I think it would have been very easy at this point to just portray him as this one note psychopath, but yet you understand why Homelander is the way he is this season. You get a bigger exploration of him whether it comes to like the daddy issues that he has, whether it comes to uh, us finding out, you know, the the constant people that he he's you know keeps uh, that that keeps just uh, distancing themselves away from him because of his actions. Um, even when it comes to, and and then him really being pushed to his breaking point this season when it comes to Stormfront and him continuing to try to maintain this really weird relation with her and her deciding to bite off her own tongue because she just uh, wants, you know, she doesn't want to suffer anymore. She doesn't want to be a part of this and ends up killing herself and, and the effect that it has on him throughout the show um, I just thought they did such an amazing job at capturing and I really just found his character to be easily the most compelling of the entire season he's so unpredictable and you never really know what he's going to do and you're so terrified of what's going to happen but yet you're also so compelled as to what exactly is this guy going to do next to get himself out of the situation is he going to be able to continue you know brushing things under the rug and covering up all the misdeeds that he's done is he going to be able to do that or is he finally going to be exposed for his crimes you know you're kind of watching with bated breath to see what is the next dastardly thing this guy is going to do and i think that star just did such a great job with that this season but then the flip side, you have Annie, who really goes through a very interesting arc this season as things are just getting so much more dicier for her. She is trying to do what she can to stay noble to her cause. She's trying to do what she can to, you know, stay true to her principles. And you can see how much, and we've seen this throughout the entire show, how much the Seven is infringing on those, you know, principles, is, is you know, hindering her from, you know, uh, uh, really, uh, achieving her full potential for, for what she really wants to do. She doesn't want to, or, you know, be with Homelander. She, but she has to pretend to be in this relationship with him because that's how he ends up manipulating her. But yet she wants to have the upper hand and you see how difficult that is for her. Um, but you also see how much things are getting complicated with the inclusion of Soldier Boy and things like that and how that is all going down and how things are being received and you can just see how much harder this is for Annie. And what I really love about this season is they really just dive further into the idea that she never really wanted any of this. Uh, I love the moments in episode three where we get to see a bit more of like her backstory when she was doing these pageants and things like that and how her mom was like basically forced forcing her to, you know, fully, uh, to, w was basically forcing her to put on this act that she really didn't want to, and we see this season, she just kind of finally gets to her breaking point, where she's just kind of over it, and when she makes the decision to not be Starlight anymore, I mean, I was not at all surprised by that, but it also feels like such a satisfying moment for this character, because it's like, okay, finally she can be her own person, she does doesn't have to live in her mother's shadow anymore. She doesn't have to 
continue to relive these moments that she doesn't want to. She doesn't have to try to forgive the Deep and not think about him forcing, you know, her to, you know, perform fellatio on him and things like that. She can, um, you know, forcing her to, uh, you know, give him a blowjob and things like that. Um, she can think about, she, she can pursue a relation with Huey and not have to constantly think about how Homelander is going to try to get in the way of that. She can finally do what she can to be her own person, and yet you see how hard it is for her to do that. And I just really love what they did with her character this season. I thought they put her in such a, uh, you know, in, in such a satisfying direction that it really just seemed like the show has been hinting at for a while, and I really like that she ended up fully uh, going to to, you know, going to that place this season. I thought it worked really well for her character. I continue to think she's one of the best written characters on this show, and this season proves even further as to why that's the case. So as you can tell, there really is a lot going on this season, but I think they do a really good job of blending everything together, particularly in the sixth episode of this season, Herogasm, which to me is nothing short of maybe the best episode of this entire show. There's so many satisfying moments just in that episode alone that showcase why this show is as good as it is, whether it's the extreme lengths they go to showcase this incredibly wild hero orgy that's going on, the places they went with that. I mean, they leaned fully into the, uh, you know, gross elements, and I, I just thought they did such a great job with that. Uh, not even, I mean, that's probably not even the most shocking moment of this season in terms of, like, uh, in, in, in terms of, like, disgusting moments. The, the, oh, the first, like, 15 minutes of episode one, yeah, I'm never gonna forget that scene, the way that all went down, but that's beside the point. Um, I love the way they leaned into that, but yet also there's so many great character moments. We already talked about the monologue with Mother's Milk that I thought was amazing. Annie, by the end of the episode, deciding to not be Starlight anymore and fully, you know, confessing who she actually is and not wanting anything to do with the corruption that's going on and just fully, uh, you know, try, you know, finally making those steps to rid herself of the life that she never really wanted. Um, but then, of course, having this incredible incredible confrontation between Homelander and Huey and Butcher and Soldier Boy and even Mother's Milk getting in on the action. I mean, this is everything we've really been hyping up for in this show. Uh, seeing all these characters just come face to face, the relationships between all of them, the animosity they have towards each other, understanding why each one is you know, why, and understanding why each one is, uh, you know, so, um, it, 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 understanding why each one is involved in this fight, uh, I just thought was just so phenomenally handled, and again, that episode kind of just represents everything that the boys does so incredibly well. The, 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 even the, some of the, uh, social commentary we get with, like, the A-Train Pepsi commercial and things like that, I'll talk about that a little bit later, um, but I just really loved everything about that, this sixth episode, I think it really just does a great job of being this major turning point for the show and kind of edging the show closer to uh, its endgame, at least it seems like it's going to, and I think uh, that episode alone um, just really solidifies what the show is able to do so well. It balances these really um, graphic and, uh, you know, gro these really gruesome moments with some really grounded character work as well as this uh, tension that escalates. All of that really just coalesces so well in this episode, and I, I think they did such a great job with that. Now, with that being said, a lot of people have claimed this season to be the best of the bunch. I've, I've heard many people say that, that, oh, season three was the best, and there were so many great elements, and while I agree with all of that, referring to this as the best season of the show, I, I don't think I can fully go there, and this may be a hot take, but I actually think out of the three seasons, this is probably the weakest uh, of the show for me, just because there's a lot going on this season, and some of it, I just wasn't fully satisfied by. There's some things I think they needed to do a bit more with, and I'm going to get into that right now. Um, 
So I talked about how great I think Homelander and Starlight and Butcher and Huey and Mother's Milk, how great all of their arcs are. The other characters this season, some of the stuff we get with them, I was just a little bit confused by. Starting off with A-Train, I like what they're trying to do with him this season. The idea that he is trying to become more of this like virtue signaling, um you know, sort of, uh, you know, sort sort of very, take on this persona of being this activist of sorts and trying to appeal to all these different causes, but doing it in a very, like, disingenuous way and the way they are, like, uh, poking fun at, like, the Imagine video and, like, the Kim Kardashian uh, Pepsi commercial and things like that. I think that's all really fun, and I enjoy what they're doing with him with that. I like that we see him get to this point where he is, you know, just trying to make himself look relevant and trying to still be in the spotlight, but it failing at every opportunity. The moment in episode six where he ends up killing Blue Hawk, I never ex was not something that I was expecting at all. I did not think they were going to go in that direction. We already know that Blue Hawk has, you know, uh, seriously injured his brother to the point where his brother's now paralyzed and he's, you know, constantly hurling racist insults at all of them, but I didn't think that A-Train was going to get to that point, but we remember just how violent this, we remember again, uh, just how uh, much rage consumes this character and how broken he really is. So many of these characters this season are so incredibly broken, but I think that uh, A-Train is one that we just don't talk enough about, how broken he really is and I was all kind of here for that and then the moment we get in the finale with his brother lashing out at him and just talking about how he's ruining his life and he just doesn't want him to be a part of this anymore I thought all of that was really great my issue is just I found that art to be very underwritten I don't think they did a great job at really giving us a full, well-realized version of what that was all supposed to be. It felt a bit all over the place. Sometimes it feels like they're just trying to use A-Train for comedic relief, and then sometimes it seems like they're trying to do something a little bit more serious, and in the midst of everything, I just didn't really know if it fit into this season. I like that he is trying to, again, you know, get back into the good graces of Homelander. I like that he's trying to prove his relevance, and then, but everything, but that coupled with this really serious arc with his brother um and you know um and, and Blue Hawk, I just think they needed to do a better job of balancing that because by the end, I was just kind of confused how those two things came together. So that was an arc that didn't really work for me. Um, another character, the Deep, I just feel like they still don't really know what to do with him. Um, they do this whole thing with him having this like, uh, you know, weird fetish with fishes, as we know, that's something he likes to do. There's a scene where he is forced to eat one of his own. That is a very effective and really um, you know, and really horrifying scene, again, just exerting the control that Homelander has and him forcing him to do these things that he doesn't want to do. But other than that, as well as, you know, what we get with his girlfriend essentially dumbing him because she doesn't want to have to fuck a fish, um, there just isn't really much going on with him, like, substance-wise, and I just feel like they, they don't really know what to do with that character right now, and that's a little disappointing, because I, I like Chase Crawford a lot in this role, I really like what they did with him in season one, but it just felt like since then, they haven't really known what to do with him as a character, and unfortunately, that continues to be the case this season. And then the other real, uh, cons you know, issue with this season, I would say, is that there are some arcs we get here, and by the end of it, I just didn't feel fully satisfied. When we talk about Black Noir, for example, I really like the exploration we get with his character. Episode 7, the way we dive fully into, you know, his past and what happened, you know, how... He was offered this opportunity by Edgar and was told what was going to happen and then Soldier Boy ended up betraying him and you can see the rage and the hatred that's within him and it, it seemed like they were setting him up to go after Soldier Boy and finally, you know, stand up to... Um, you know, everyone that's constantly pushed him around and things like that. I really liked that idea, but then he's just killed in the finale. And I'm just like, what was the point of getting all of this backstory with Black Noir if we're just going to kill him? And I like the scene where Homelander asks him, you know, a very direct question of like, did you know that Soldier Boy was my father? I like that. Um, 
I just wish that it was handled in a way that felt a little bit more satisfying. I don't know if you needed Black Noir to like get in on the act at first, or maybe he tries to kill Soldier Boy and it doesn't work, and then Homelander does what he's gonna do. But it just felt a little anticlimactic to me. Like we were led down this path that Black Noir was gonna have a really crucial role in this season. And by the end, well, yes, I think everything they did with him in episode seven was really poignant and really made me like that. It really made me uh in that you know feel that much more uh, attached to that character emotionally than I was and I I will admit the scene of like all of his like imaginary friends like surrounding him uh, was a really uh, you know emotional scene um, I just felt like they didn't really, I, I just felt like as a whole, um, it just felt a little bit anticlimactic to me, and I don't really understand why they focused so heavily on that if, again, he was just going to end up dying. It almost felt like this misdirect of sorts, and I wasn't really a huge fan of that. Also, Edgar being ousted in the way that he was, I thought was a really shocking moment, but I wanted to see more of him after that. We kind of get the sense that he's always kind of been pulling the strings, but after this moment, we don't see him after that, and I was a little bit disappointed, not just because I love Giancarlo Esposito, and I'm always excited to see everything that he does, um... But I really just wanted to see more of his character. What happens to him after he is, you know, ousted from the Seven? And what, what does he have any other sort of plan up his sleeve? I hope this is not the last we see of him because I think there's still potential with that character, but also the way this is going to challenge his dynamic with his daughter. Um, I'm interested to see how that all ends up going down, um, but I don't know if we're ever going to get to see that. If that is the last we get with Edgar, I'm just not super satisfied. It felt very abrupt and I think that was the point but I hope it's one of those things where it's like that's it for him this season but not in the overall like grand scheme of things so I, I guess we'll see what happens there but I would say my biggest issue with this season for me is really just the way they wrap things up in the finale uh Maeve's sacrifice as a whole I don't have a problem with. I like the fact, at first, when I watched the season, because I've seen it twice now, um, I didn't like the fact that Maeve survived. I thought that she should die. I thought it made sense for her to have this really noble sacrifice and things like that with the way they were handling her character. But really thinking about it, I like the fact that she gets to finally get away from all of this. She's the first character in the show that essentially gets a happy ending. No, she doesn't have her powers anymore, but she gets to live on a farm with her girlfriend. She gets to be herself. She doesn't have to deal with all the drama of the Seven anymore. She can just live with the fact that people think that, you know, that they think that she's dead and they're not going to come looking for her. And I think that is a really good ending for this character, and I really like what they did with her. The issue is, I don't think she had a prominent enough role in this season for this to be her farewell. I think they needed to do more with her, and I think something I, I want to see more of is that tape that she has. They made a big deal out of the fact that she has this recording of Homelander on the plane, and she can expose that at any time, but then in this season, she kind of admits that that was just kind of a front. It wasn't something that was actually, like, legitimate. She wasn't really going to do anything about it. Um... And I like that by the end, she is this hero of sorts. Like, the thing that she, like, she talked about how there weren't any, you know, real heroes. Like, she was constantly bemoaning the fact that she wasn't a hero and didn't want people to refer to her as one, but then finally gets to be one. I think that is a really satisfying end for this character. I just wish that the entire season, she wasn't just basically out, de you know, out of commission the entire season. Most of the season, there, there's some good moments with her and Butcher, but she's either, you know presenting information to Butcher in a holding cell where she's trying to, you know, get Homelander to crack, basically, or a revealing information to Annie. She doesn't really do much on her own this season, really, until episode 8, and I just felt like if this was going to be the final season for Maeve, they needed to use her in a more substantial way, and I just didn't feel as satisfied by the end of her character as I did here. I'm fine with what they did. I think it's a perfect... I think the, the actual ending of what they did is perfect for her character. Again, I just wish that they spent a bit more time building up to it overall. 
and, and in the same vein where it felt like they were leading to something big when it came to uh, Maeve and this recording of sorts, I feel the same way about Newman. They made it seem like in the beginning of the season that she was going to do something wild and crazy. She was going to team with Homelander and either she was going to die or he was, you know, or something else was going to happen and... They really kind of put her on the back burner after what happens with uh, Edgar. She's there, and she definitely has like a prominent role in this season, but it feels like they are more so setting her up for season four, and that really is like a general issue with the end of this season for me, is that it feels like the entire season we're building up to something huge, and that's going to be massive and like game-changing for the show. And instead, this ends up feeling more like a transitional season of sorts. Yes, we end up defeating Soldier Boy, who, you know, I've seen some people say they don't understand why they pivoted to Soldier Boy from Homelander. I think, again, it's more so just the unpredictability of him, knowing that he is kind of influencing Homelander into his worst tendencies and things like that to be his worst self. Uh, and, you know, that's going to be fueled more by Soldier Boy, but also because they can't really trust him. Um... I think they felt that needed that threat needed to be dealt with immediately. And so I don't really have a problem with Soldier Boy dying at all. I thought it made perfect sense for them to kill him. Um, again, it just feels like they were building to something a bit bigger, and we don't necessarily get that here. I'll talk about the things I really liked about the finale in a bit, but there were some things that I did end up feeling just a bit underwhelmed by, and those are really my main issues with this season that kind of hold it back from being what many seem to claim is is the best now the things i liked about this finale there's quite a bit the thing i will say right off the bat is that i really appreciate just how mature the storytelling was for this finale i mean we really see these characters deal with the consequences of their actions in this finale uh whether it's smaller moments like Huey talking to Annie and, you know, admitting the fact that his father actually isn't a loser and that he's looking up to him and now he sees him as this this guy who was there for his family really shows how far Huey has come as a character. He's gone from someone who kind of was ashamed by his father to now actually seems to appreciate him and I thought that was a really great moment. But then him admitting to Annie that she was right about Soldier Boy and she was right about, um, Temp V and the dangerous effects that it had, um, I thought was just a really great moment. I love the way that was paid off and that Annie uh, does, in fact, also become like a full-fledged member of the boys by the end of this. I thought that was all really great. Um, but then bigger moments like Mother's Milk admitting to Janine about the fact that soups aren't all they're cracked up to be. There actually are some really bad ones out there. I thought this was a really great moment for him. I loved the uh, idea of his wife, Mary, you know, dating this guy who's like a full on racist and doesn't really seem to, you know, is just very ignorant to the idea of the boys, uh, of the soups, not all, not all being good and having some really dangerous traits about them, him not willing to open his eyes to all of the atrocities that they've committed. And, you know, M.M. having to kind of come in there and let Janine know, you know, what's going on and that, you know, he's trying to do what he can to provide a better world for her, uh, I just thought was a really great moment and really just, again, pushes his character up a few notches that we haven't seen before. So I really love what they did with him there. Frenchie standing up to Homelander as well and, like, demanding he gets paid more and is respected more. Like, they, it was a really funny moment because it came out of nowhere, but it also is very satisfying because Frenchie's always been someone who is, like, repressing his emotions. He's always been, like, you know, dutifully... He, he's always been, like, very loyal to Butcher. He's never really latched out at him, but you see that his, you know, bond with Kamiko, who, I mean, they're very clearly going down this romantic path with them, and I'm very much here for it. I really love... Of everything they do with them this season but you can see it is uh giving Frenchie this confidence and giving him this um you know it's 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 giving him the motivation to finally just admit how he's feeling and not hold back anymore and I moments like that I thought was just really satisfying here but then, of course, there are two huge moments in this finale that really end up uh, setting us down. What's probably going to be a very explosive and, I think, pretty depressing fourth season. Um, 
we find out with Butcher that because he has consumed, you know, Tem V, which, you know, we find out is lethal and is going to have this effect on uh, non soup, um, you know, make them very sick. And we see with Butcher because he's now consumed, I think he said like th two doses of Tem V. Uh, he now is in such bad shape health wise that he only now has a few months to live. And you see him kind of accept that. He's realizing that there's really nothing he can do about it, but I think now we're going to see a Butcher that is much more willing to kind of accept his fates, and what does that really mean for him? Is he going to make as risky as decisions, or is he going to maybe try to, you know, uh, savor every possible moment that he can? Is he going to, you know, go down this path that he continues to go down, or is this going to be the thing that maybe gets him to kind of pump the brakes a bit and maybe recognize what's important in life? I'm really interested to see where they go down with him, and that might even change with now the way Gen V ends, which I'll talk about in a bit, um, but I really like what they did with him overall, and I, I think they they took that character in just a really interesting direction by the end of this, but also what happened with Ryan, with him essentially choosing Homelander now, I mean, I think Butcher is going to be going down this really personal path where his main goal is going to be trying to do what he can to, you know, uh, recon to, you know, fix things with Ryan. He doesn't want Ryan to turn out the way things did with his childhood. He doesn't want to be this neglectful father. He does doesn't want to lead Ryan down this dark path. He he wants to, I think, remember that promise he made to Becca that nothing bad will happen to Ryan. And I think we're going to see that be a very big part of, uh, I, I think that's going to be a pretty crucial part of uh, season four. So I'm, I'm interested to see how that's all going to go down. But then with Homelander, oh my god, I was not expecting them to go in the direction that they did, where he introduces Ryan, and there are people in the crowd that are, are not very happy with what has been revealed about him, what he did to Maeve, what he did to Starlight. There are some very staunch protesters there that are very adamant about the fact that, like, you know, he is this, uh, you know, he, he is, he's abusive, and he's killed people, and things like that, and he needs to pay for his crimes, and Homelander, in a season where he has been so unrestrained and so, um, you know, has had such a hard time controlling his anger, controlling his rage, finally, you know, does the, the probably the, the biggest thing that could potentially expose and ruin his entire legacy, probably does the most careless thing he has done in this show yet, and literally lasers this guy in broad daylight. And just like that... He's dead, and you can see on Homelander's face, he's expecting the crowd to turn on him. He's expecting this crowd to, you know, start, you know, have, you know, to start hurling their pitchforks at him and hurling all these insults, but instead, they are embracing him for it, and it's kind of this direct parallel of sorts to... Uh, you know, to what we see with, like, Trump supporters and things like that, where constantly things will be said, and that, that should very easily get the crowd angry, but because they are seeing Homelander as this, like, independent guy who's, who's doing his own thing, and he's, he's, you know, um, re, re you know, he, he is, uh, you know, claiming, staking his claim and things like that, they are worshipping him, and it really seems like he's gonna go down this path where now he's gonna be seen as almost this, like, cult leader of sorts, and I'm interested to see, you know, how that's all gonna go down, him becoming this, like, radicalized version of what he's been, um, but also seeing the effect that this has on him with him now fully embracing it and Ryan also having this like really, uh, you know, sinister smile on his face as well. What is that dynamic going to be like? Because I, I don't think it's going to go well. I mean, every single relationship that's been important to Homelander, he has ruined in some way. I do not see this working out. I think this is going to be something where at first maybe Ryan is, you know, enticed by what Homelander's doing, but I think Homelander is going to fuck it up somehow just like he has with everything else in his life and I think we're just seeing the beginning of that so how is that all gonna go down this trial of sorts that he still is involved in how is that gonna be I think it's just such a haunting way to end this season but really again just showcases the dark direction that things are headed and I was just really impressed by uh the way they wrap this season up overall
But it really does feel like by the end of the season, we have fully transitioned into the next phase of sorts of this show. You have the boys basically divided. You know, no one's really trusting Butcher at this point. He's off doing his own thing. You have Annie, who's now witch loyalties, and she has been for a while, but is now, like, officially gone over to the boys. I'm excited to see how that dynamic plays out. But now you also you have this whole thing with Newman now, with her trying to be the vice president and how that's all going to happen. And then you have Butcher, who has months to live. And then you have Homelander, who's becoming, like I said, almost this radicalized sort of uh, political figure that's now, you know, dr that, that, that's now going to have swaths of people adoring him that maybe he never really wanted, but yet is going to fully embrace it because, well, people are still on my side. And as long as people are defending him, that's all he really cares about. So he can continue to, uh, you know, proceed in such diabolical actions, but continually brush them against the rug and face zero consequences consequences. I'm just really excited to see how this next season is going to play out. I think it has so much potential moving forward. And I guess I'll go ahead and address the thing that everyone wants me to talk about. Yeah, they have recently confirmed that season five is going to be the last season of the show. And I'm honestly here for that because I feel like the way they wrap things up in this season in particular, it really does feel like this is we're getting close to the end that we are really you know we're we've we've gone through all the you know we we've really been hinting at these characters going down the these dark paths before and now we are fully leaning into it and it's really getting closer to to the end of it all and i think this is absolutely the the i, I think it was absolutely the right move to uh you know to to go in that direction with this show i think there's there's only so much more you can do with this but also there there's so so much more they can do in these last two seasons and it's gonna make you know it, it already has me excited with the directions they're taking things um but now knowing that there's only two seasons left, it's every the tension is going to be so much higher and the momentum is really just going to be at an all time high in a way that the show really hasn't been before. And so I'm really excited to see how things play out over these last two seasons. So overall, The Boys Season 3 really is just a perfect example of what this show ends up doing best. It takes the fantastic, uh, you know, insane, you know, moments that we, or wild moments we've seen in the show, but continues to ground it in such well-realized character dynamics, taking these characters to some of the darkest places that they've ever been, but also really challenging them in ways that we haven't really seen before, ending in a way that has me clamor, chomping at the bit for Season 4, and I am so excited that we are finally getting it because I think there's so many directions that it can really go. I do think there are some plot lines that are a bit underwritten, and sometimes it does feel there is a bit too much happening this season that doesn't ultimately get resolved and feels like it's more set up for future seasons, but... I really love a lot of what this season is trying to do. I love the directions that it goes with some of these characters. I love the way it dives deeper into the consequences of everyone's actions and uh, the constant, um, you know, the constant naivety that some of them have, that things are exactly going to go the way they are, but then aren't always going to go that way. And what happens when, you know, things go awry. I think they just explore that really well this season. Performances, as usual, are always top notch, but Anthony Starr really just runs away as the standout of this entire season and giving I think one of the best villain performances we have really seen of all time I think by the time this show is done I think he will be nothing short of one of the greatest out there uh, with all the depth we get to his character this season and the layers we get with him and just seeing how hard it is for him to keep it all together. I thought they just did such an amazing job with that. Um, overall, I mean, this show continues to be one of the best shows on TV. I am very happy that I was finally able to review it. So I'm going to give The Boys Season 3 overall an A-. minus. All right, so despite the fact I said I wasn't going to talk about the boys that long, I think I did go on longer than I expected to. Uh, but let's go ahead and transition over to Gen V now. So what this show is basically about is we are center. Basically, it takes place in this uh, school known as Gadalton, and Gadalton is this school that has been designed uh, for uh, you know teenage for uh, college kids with superhuman abilities. They are going into the school to train to potentially become members of the Seven, and we focus around this character Marie, who has recently joined uh, the school, and in doing so, discovers a bunch of conspiracies that may potentially. Uh, change the way others view the school overall. 
So I was pretty hyped for this show. I mean, the fact that we were getting a spinoff of The Boys and kind of visiting a different part of the universe that we hadn't seen before and a different, you know, meeting new characters, but also, you know, seeing how this, how, you know, what's going on in, in the current world of the show is, is affecting a different part of, uh, is, is affecting um, a whole other facility that we haven't seen before. I was really excited to see how it was going to be. But of course, I did have that worry that, you know, you have with most spinoffs that maybe it wasn't going to live up. Maybe this was going to be a step down. Is it really going to feel like it, it, it fits in line with everything? And while I will say, I don't think the show is on the level of, uh, you know, it, it, of the previous show I just talked about, I still think that Gen V really asserts itself as a very intriguing and very different uh, fa di different type of show than we have seen before and does a really good job, I think, of overall really standing out on its own more so than I was expecting it to. So I do just want to get into it right now. Now, the one thing I can say immediately right off the bat the show does such a great job with is its characters. I think all the characters here are really well written. I really found myself drawn to everybody here, and I think that uh, that is one of the best parts of the show for sure. When we're talking about our main lead of Marie, I think she is just so instantly compelling. You know, the first scene of the show, she is, uh, you know, the, the first scene of the show, we see her uh, when she's a young girl getting her first period, and it has this su such a huge profound effect on her that the blood ends up because of like her the pressure it ends up killing her parents and she doesn't know what's going on she can't seem to control it and so she has this power but yet hasn't fully utilized it yet and doesn't even fully understand how it works and that alone is such an interesting sort of idea I, if that was all her character was that would be very interesting but it's the fact that it's now driven her apart from her sister to the point where her and her sister now, they don't have a relationship and she is so destined to prove to her sister that she is a hero, that she is doing everything she possibly can to make herself look like one. And I think that is such an interesting idea for a lead character because it's very easy for her to go down this unlikable path, but yet you understand why Marie is doing what she's doing. Yes, she's doing it for selfish reasons, but she also just generally wants to be able to reconnect with her sister. She wants to have that bond with her. And so there's something noble about that. There's something to really latch onto. But she also wants to do, you know, she wants to be, you know, she wants to be this hero. She feels that that's the path she needs to go down in order to, you know, constantly feeling she has to prove herself to people. She has to feel like, you know, she is this hero because maybe if they think she is, then she is. Is. And I think that's such an interesting idea for her character. Uh, and Jazz Sinclair just does such a great job of portraying her in this show. You find yourself really drawn to Marie because of how human she is. There's so many moments in this show where she's making a decision and I feel like if it wasn't for Sinclair's acting that decision would feel weird and it wouldn't really feel like it fit in line but because of the way that Sinclair just perfectly understands this character and rides that line really well between someone who is doing something for selfish reasons but also doing something for a noble reason um, I think she does a really great job at just getting you to, to like this character overall so I really enjoyed her performance in the show and just really found myself drawn to her arc. One of my favorite scenes in the entire show is when she is looking at that teleprompter and they are proclaiming her to be this hero of sorts for what happened with uh golden boy who we'll talk about in a bit um but, uh, you know, she is, and she wants to let them know that she wasn't responsible for that, that that wasn't something that she was partaking in. But, you know, and, and you know, the, the, the selfless side of her wants to do that, but her selfish side gives in where she does end up reading the prompt and she does end up taking the credits. And I thought that was just such an incredible scene. And again, just really showcased how great Sinclair is in this role, getting you to perfectly understand uh, her actions at all times, but also getting you to really just like her, you know, really having this likable sort of quality to her that I think just works really well as a protagonist. So I just really enjoyed her in this show a lot. 
But easily, I think the best character in this show is the character of Emma, who I just really love what they end up doing with her. She has such a unique superpower in which she uh, can shrink down, but yet it's not really like anything we've seen before. The way that she ends up obtaining this power is essentially through an eating disorder and the way they kind of use that to commentate on you know body you know body shame and things like that I thought was just so well handled in this show Emma is somebody who is kind of distraught about the fact that she is viewed in this way people are constantly seeing her as this child star who, uh, you know, similar to Starlight's, uh, has, you know, partaken in a lot of embarrassing projects that she doesn't want to be associated with, but yet because of the fact that that's what she's known for, she is. And so you are dealing with this character that, yes, is, you know, embracing it, but also is very embarrassed by it. And you see her constantly have to deal with that throughout the show. And I really love the arc that she ended up going down. I really like where they ended up leaving things off with her character this season. Everything we get with like her, you know, incredibly just overbearing mother who is always trying to pressure her into, you know, um, eating more and things like that. Um, I, I just think that she is just such a well-realized character here and everything they did with her uh, was just so great in this show. I really found myself uh, just drawn to her and and I think Lizzie uh, Broadway as, as this character is just fantastic here. She's very likable, but she's also someone that you just feel such sympathy for and you really find yourself latching onto. And I think, again, it's because the way that Broadway really does portray her. She does such a great job of getting you to feel this sympathy for her character and understanding just how bothered she is and how much she just wants people to like her for her, not because of Little Cricket or whoever she's been before. She wants to be loved for who she is, and I think that that, uh, that arc just works so well throughout this show. Now, I really can't talk about any of the other characters in the show without talking about the character that I thought was going to be pretty prominent in this season, and that is Golden Boy, who I gotta applaud uh, the writers of this show, you know, similar to the boys, uh, finding a way to subvert our expectations, but making a better show as a result of that, because what I just told you the premise of the show is, that's not really what this show is actually about. What we're actually dealing with is this character, Golden Boy, who in the beginning of the show, he's kind of propped up to be like the main leader of the Seven. He's going to be the person that is... Um, going to be selected, you know, he's doing, he, everyone loves him, he is constantly pressured by the fact that he has to be perfect, and he always has to do the right thing, and you can see how much that is eating away at him, and you, I figured he was gonna go down this, like, Homelander type direction, I thought that's for sure what they were gonna do with him, um, and you think that's what's gonna end up happening, and there's a moment at the end of episode one, where it seems like they are pushing him to that point, but then, rather than embrace the fact that he has this darkness within him, he instead ends up running away from it and killing himself. And by the end of the first episode, he's dead. And the whole rest of this show is trying to figure out what led him to that point. Who really was he? Is Was he the guy that everyone said he was? But also uncovering, like, this deeper reasoning for, you know, why things happened the way, you know, why things went down the way they did, um is such a brilliant uh, idea for this show. It does such a great job of taking a character that seemed like he was going to be this huge focus, as well as uh, Brinker, uh, you know, Brinkeroff. You think he's, you think Brink is going to be this huge character as well. Clancy Brown is just, as usual, just so good in this role. Choose up all the scenery whenever he's on screen. Um, and it seems like, you know, he's going to be this, like, really um, just unlikable and uh, sinister, you know, character with this, like, sinister agenda. You think he's going to play a really big role who, who clearly you know, has his own motivations for what he wants to do, but he also is killed off in the first episode, and I just, I really like that the show went to those places. They could, I feel like they could have gone down a very predictable route, but the one thing I can say about the show throughout is that it really never goes there. There isn't a single thing that happened in the show that I could really predict, and I think starting off with Golden Boy and how he really, by the end of the show, 
it just really is a good guy who was trying to do right at all times and really kind of struggled with that, um, I thought was just really well done, and I really love the way they portrayed this character. I've not been a big fan of Patrick Schwarzenegger as an actor, but I really did like him in this role. He really did convince me that he, uh, you know, is someone that is, you know, trying to do right at all costs and is really struggling to do so, but also is facing a lot of inner demons of his own. I think he did a good job of leaning into that, and despite the fact that he's not in the show a ton, whenever he is there, I thought he was really effective, and I really like the way they uh, went about his character throughout this season. I gotta say, aside from Emma, the other character I found myself really drawn to this season is the character of Sam, because there is a lot of mystery surrounding this character. The first episode, we think he's dead. We think that's what's happened to him, but we find out later on in the season that he is a part of this place called The Woods. It is this facility of sorts that he's been brought into where he has been thrown into this uh, cell pretty much for a long period of his life to where he has been... He is now someone that uh, they are testing on to see if they if he can become just as strong and just as valuable to everyone as his brother was. And because that it really has like warped his mind in a way to where he is constantly in this like childlike state. He doesn't know what's real and what's fantasy. And I fucking loved everything they did with this character throughout this season. He is so incredibly dangerous. You never really know what he's going to do. He kind of ends up being the Homelander in that way. But he also has the conscience that Homelander doesn't, and you can see how much he doesn't like this side of him, and you can see how much he doesn't want to have to go down this path. So you are feeling this empathy for him, because you understand how much pain this character is really in, and how much he wants to escape that, and how he kind of finds, uh, you know, how he kind of starts to find himself through his relationship with Emma, I thought was just really well done throughout the show, but yet again, you always feel like things could go wrong at any point for him. There's so much turmoil he's been through. He's so unstable in that way. And Aza German is phenomenal in this show. Honestly, might be the standout performance of the entire show for me, especially in, I would say, fourth episode. He had some moments that just really blew me away, and I was just really impressed by him. Um, throughout this season. I think he gave a really strong performance here, and I just really liked everything that he ended up doing with his character. He took a character that I thought was going to go in one direction, and then really didn't by the end of this season, um, and really, I just found myself so compelled by what they were trying to do with him, and the, the, the different direction, and uh, just the complexity of his character overall, you know, whether he ends up going down this path of, of dark, you know, whether he ends up going down this path of darkness, or is he able to rise above it uh, I just found to be so incredibly compelling but also this like I said this childlike state that he's in and you know constantly feeling this uh, uneasiness around him and or us as well feeling this uneasiness um, I, I thought he just you know they just did such a great job developing his character and I really just found myself so latched on to him so those are really the characters that I was really impressed by this season. I'll talk about some of the other characters a little bit later. Um, so I think that alone works really well in the show. But the other thing I really enjoyed is the central premise of this, this show. The whole idea of like the rankings and things like that and how everyone is trying to join the seven. What I thought this show was going to be at the beginning is kind of this, you know, combat, this power battle of sorts between all these characters and them all trying to obtain these roles. And while for a little bit, that's what this is it really becomes more of this mystery of sorts where we know that there is something weird going on surrounding the woods. We don't really know what that's about, but we also know that there's a reason that, uh, you know, there there is a reason that Luke believed that Sam was dead. That wasn't for nothing, He whether he was, you know, told that, that that was the case. And you think for a while that a lot of the mysticism of the scene, there are, there are moments where characters are just kind of blacking out and forgetting things. And you think for a while the character that is surrounding that is Rufus, who I thought they did such a great job at uh, presenting as the ultimate red herring. I mean, from the moment 
we first see him, he is such a disgusting and off-putting character. He's always hurling insults at women. He tries to sexually assault uh, Marie at one point, and you think for sure, like, he's the guy behind this because he has this uh, ability to, you know, control you and make you forget about your memories and things like that, and you think that he maybe is the one behind what's going on. It seems like that's the direction that they're going in, but then it turns out that's not the case because lingering in the background this entire time has been the character of Kate, who, you know, also has that mind control ability, and I thought they did such a great job at this reveal. The moment where we find out that these characters, the reason that they're blacking out, the reason why uh, Luke forgot about his brother and all really was because of Kate, was just so well handled. That fifth episode is easily my favorite episode of the entire show, not just because of the risks it really takes with characters constantly blacking out and basically forgetting the events of the rest of the show, but also how well earned that reveal really is. Kate was a character that we thought, you know, was just very sympathetic. She lost her boyfriend, she wanted people to feel, you know, she felt that she understood him in a way that others simply didn't. Uh, she herself was confused as to what was really going on, and we really felt for her character, but yet secretly she was kind of behind everything and we really do see her character go through this shift of sorts and I thought it did a great job of enhancing uh the potential of that character but also really uh just heightening the tension of this show and getting us to uh really again do some things that the boys hasn't really gone to the boys has given us some shocking moments before but this show like I said it takes much more of this like mystery type of approach and that's something that I just really appreciate appreciate overall. I thought they did a really good job of developing throughout the season because the rest of the season pretty much is like, let's find out more about Kate. You know, we find out that she was through this, like, she had this really terrible childhood where she had these parents that were so ashamed at her powers and so worried at how it was going to affect like her brother that they like locked her in the house and she's never really had a real childhood. And really the only person that has ever been like a parental type figure to her and she has told her to you know, make them forget because it's going to make them feel better. They don't have to deal with the pain. They don't have to remember the pain. So therefore they don't have to suffer in that way. And she just kind of went along with it the entire time. And again, I just think this twist works out so well. They did a great job of, you know, kind of pulling the string of, of kind of planting the breadcrumbs early on, but not really revealing what's happening. There are moments throughout the show where you can tell that Kate, you know that Kate has this ability, but we're so focused on all the disgusting stuff that Rufus is doing that we don't realize that maybe it actually is one of them that's behind it all. And when it turns out to be Kate, I just thought, oh, they did such a great job with that and I was generally just so blown away by the way that paid off. And when it came to Indira as a character, I really like what they did with uh, Shetty. I, I liked what they did with her as a character here because I th I thought for at first she was just going to be like this overly like powerful villain that was just trying to kill all the soups and things like that and just kind of take over and make like humans the the dominant species or something. I thought they were going to go down some like really generic path like that but she actually has like a very clear motivation for what she's doing. We find out that her husband and child were actually killed on the plane crash back in season one. You know the one that Homelander just kind of let happen. He didn't try to stop. He didn't try to you know save them in any way they were a part of that and because of that it has made Shetty just completely detest all soups and feel that there isn't you know despite the fact that some of them may have some good in them they are doing more harm than good to society and she has developed this like virus of sorts that's going to you know kill them all off and to the point where she wants this to be like an airborne virus she's gonna make sure that all of them are affected by this and I thought they did a really great job of getting you to, despite the fact of all, you know, the shit that she's doing, get you to understand her character, what would really push her to this point. I really did find myself uh, impressed by that. I also forgot to talk about the fact that not only do we find out uh, what uh, what Shetty's motivation was, but also we find out that Godolkin was actually a front. It was never really a school. It was supposed to be this... Uh, way to test out all these superhumans' abilities, and I, I love the line where she says it wasn't about 
uh, you learning anything was about them learning more about you. So you can see this entire time, it's always been this like super shady operation. It just dives deeper into the ideas of Vought and how insincere and just how inhumane so many of their practices are. You think of what happened with Sam, you think of what happened with multiple characters in the show. Uh, gives you even more reasons to hate Vaught, and I think that's something that this show does uh, did a really good job with here. So it gets you to both understand Shetty's motivation, but also getting you to understand, again, yet another reason to, to hate Vaught overall. And the fact that it almost ends up working out for her, like, people start taking this virus, and it seems like it's gonna happen, and then it doesn't end up happening because Kate ultimately does decide to betray her, I thought was such a great moment. That moment where, you know, you see her and she's revealing her plan to all of them and you think that what's going to happen at first is that maybe Newman's going to show up and she's going to do something, but instead... Kate just ends up killing her because she kind of sees it as well. You know, she's been the, she's been the, she's been the problem all this time. She's been the person responsible for what's going on. And I've seen some people say that this particular moment didn't make sense for Kate, that it felt kind of abrupt. And I didn't really feel that, if I'm being honest. I thought they did a good job when it came to her character because you kind of see it as she sees uh, Shetty as directly responsible for everything that's gone down. Yes, Kate controlled Luke and made him forget about his brother, but that wouldn't have happened if Shetty didn't instruct her to do it. Uh, yes, you know, Luke ended up dying, but again, that was really Shetty that was behind it. So she kind of sees it as, well, if Shetty dies then that's going to make our lives better, but then also now going down this path of wanting every human to die and wanting to free everybody from um, the woods was such an interesting idea for her character that I was not... was, was such an interesting left turn for her character that I was not expecting. But again, it really does make sense because I do think Kate still sees herself as doing a good thing. She doesn't realize... Uh, the consequence this is going to have. She doesn't realize that this is actually genocide that she is committing. Um, she is so fo fixated on the idea that a human tried to kill off all of the soups that now she feels the reverse needs, that the, the opposite really needs to happen. And, you know, I think they did a great job of really setting that up. And then for Sam to also be behind what's going on, I think also makes a lot of sense. You know, he's never going to see humans in a positive light because ultimately they took his childhood away from him. He's never had a normal life. And despite the fact that he's trying to pursue this relationship with, uh, with Emma, he can't help but constantly be seen as sort of like this child and her having to babysit him. And so I thought it made sense for him to actually side with Kate. I wasn't confused at all by why they decided to do that. I thought it made sense with everything they had set up up to that point. So I didn't really have any issue when it came to that particular moment. The way the show really dives into the idea of all of these, you know, different abilities that these characters have, I think is also really well done. Yes, we've seen the soups on the show, but we've never seen them when they were in their prime. We've seen them when they've been past their prime and kind of like, uh, you know, have become beloved superheroes. Here, we get to see these characters characters really kind of starting to understand and harness their powers. You have someone like Marie, who, like I said, is having a hard time really controlling it, but then you have someone like Emma, who her entire life is pretty much dictated by the fact that she can shrink, and she has to e either purge or, you know, eat a lot to, you know, either grow or shrink, um... I thought that was just such a great idea the way they leaned into that. The different powers that all these characters had were really interesting to watch and the way that they utilized them. But also, I thought the way that they utilized, the, the, the way they, uh, you know, took on this idea of uh, the the the, uh, the rankings and things like that, I thought was also really interesting to see the way these characters are kind of overthrowing each other at first and things like that. I, I really enjoyed the way that the show leaned into that. I wish they did a little bit more or they really turn it more into like this mystery of sorts and I wish that we had a few more moments of them trying to kind of double cross one another for like the rankings and things like that after like episode two or three that is still a prominent moment but it is much more about uncovering this mystery and I was really interested in the mystery and I found myself really latching on to what was going on 
But I thought that was a good way of, of you know, really just, uh, you know, diving into what is this all about for all these different characters? What are they all trying to do? They're all ultimately trying to get into the seven and you can see how competitive it is for all these characters in doing so. And then ultimately getting to the finale here, I thought was incredibly well done. Uh, despite the fact that, yes, it is the shortest episode of the season, I would not call this episode rushed. I think they did a good job of uh, really finding a way to uh, just really, uh, you know, wrap things up, but also uh, kind of tease us as to what's going to happen in both this show and also in The Boys Season 4, which has me even more excited for The Boys Season 4 with how things leave off here, where we see, you know, uh, Marie is trying to to stop Kate trying to do whatever she can to get her to come to her senses. It's not really working. Meanwhile, you have Sam, who his desire to side with her is only amplified in this episode. That conversation he has with Emma is one of my favorite scenes in the entire show because I don't think he says anything wrong to her. It's like she's had this normal childhood. She's focused on obtaining movie roles and things like that. She's focused on, you know, getting to do all these things a normal kid would do while he's trying to catch up. He's trying to understand what it even means to be a normal, you know, what it even means to be normal, and he's never really going to be able to fully understand that, and because of that, she's never really going to understand, and everything she has done selflessly has been for selfish reasons, and that's true. Why? Because, again, most of these characters throughout this show are really doing this to become the candidate to be, you know, to be in the seven. They want to be the one selected, and that's why Emma ultimately, you know, saved Luke, because she wanted to be seen as that hero. She wanted to have that moment, and I like that he ultimately, you know, I like that Sam calls her out on that. I thought it was a really great moment for him, and, you know, seeing Kate take his pain away, it's really devastating, because you know how much this is eating away at him constantly, but I also feel like his pain was kind of his conscience. Like, that was the thing that was keeping him from fully turning dark and leaning into those more sinister abilities but her taking it away I mean he's now basically this emotionless robot of sorts and I, I don't think that's gonna be the case like the rest of the show I think eventually he's gonna get uh he, he's gonna get those feelings back but I mean the the fact that he's now allied with Kate uh is such an interesting development for that character because I mean we know that he also is probably, you know, r still really pissed at Kate, knowing that she's the reason that his brother thought he was dead all this time. And I think that is something that eventually we're going to hear more about, whether it's in this show, whether it's in The Boys, I'm not really sure. But I really hope they end up doing more with that because I, I just want to see more of that dynamic. I think it's interesting to see these two working alongside each other, but also maybe not really enjoying each other's company. I think we're going to see a lot of that, um, you know, through throughout uh, the rest of the show. But everything we get here in this final episode with, like, this all-out, like, you know, basically, uh, tr you know, uh, this this massacre of sorts that's happening with all the soups going after the humans and humans doing what they can to, to flee away. You have that one character that's, like, obsessed with social media and her just worrying that she's not going to be able to document her death and things like that. Um, I thought they did a great job of both uh, showcasing the chaos of this moment and really just delivering on just the uh you know gruesome the, the grisly and like gory moments we expect to see from this show um but also kind of giving it doing this doing their own spin on like a school shooting like that's kind of what i saw this as that's why these characters are in such fear that's why things have you know gone into full-on chaos that's why no one's really able to stop anything it kind of is their take on a school shooting in that way and i thought that was something that was uh really well handled handled the way they did that. I always enjoy the way both of these shows lean into social commentary, but I think this is one of the most impressive, uh, impressive uses of it yet, and I thought that that was something that was just really impressive here. But like I said, Marie tries to intervene. It doesn't really end up working until she remembers what Newman said to her. You know, she met with Newman earlier on in the show. They had this conversation about trying to enhance her full abilities and, you know, using her her blood as a weapon and that's exactly what she decides to do and we see for the first time she 
she uses it in the same way that Newman did when the heads explode and and uh, Kate's arm literally ends up exploding and this ends up kind of stopping everybody and then who comes in there's Homelander right there he tries to intervene and I saw this as he's aware of what happened, but he wants to spin his own narrative because he knows who he wants to be in the seven and he's going to do everything in his power to make that happen. Because think about this, this was Ashley that knew it was going down. Ashley is absolutely Homelander's right hand man, right hand man at this point. She's going to do everything in her power to make sure that he's satisfied and spin things the way that he wants it to be. So, I mean, I feel like this was very much her doing. And so I, I feel like this was very much, you know, what she relayed to him and what he interpreted from it. Um, but I also think that he had his own plan up his sleeve because he basically ends up telling Marie that she's this monster, that she's, you know, killing her own and things like that. And we get this moment where... Marie, Andre, and, uh, you know, and Jordan, they are framed for what is going on. They are the ones that are responsible for that are, uh, they're, uh, being, you know, they're, they're being the ones blamed for this massacre. They're the ones getting the brunt of it right now. Whereas Sam and Kate, the people who were behind what happened, they are the ones being praised as heroes. And that is such an interesting idea and perfectly leads us into the boys because the look that Homelander has on his face, I mean, we got to see these characters again we're absolutely gonna see sam and kate again i i know that they uh have teased that they're gonna be in season four and i'm already really interested to see what this is all about is homelander like recruiting his own team is he gonna use them to his advantage does he know what they did is he gonna find out what they did there, there's so many directions they can take this and i think that is such an interesting idea and then having all these characters now in this uh it seems like a mental institution of some sorts. We're not really sure. They're in a room that doesn't have any doors, and they're not really sure where they are. We kind of ended on this moment where we don't really know what's going to happen, and I like that. I like that we're very much in the dark of what the rest of this is is really going to be. Um, but also, the way they're able to connect it to the boys, I think they, they do a really good job with here. The moment at the end we get with Butcher, with him coming in and discovering, you know, what this virus is all about... Is he going to use this as a way to try to once again take down the soups? He's kind of alone now. He's kind of doing his own thing. So I don't really know what's going to happen there. Is he going to try to do something about this virus because he doesn't want Ryan to be exposed to it? Or is he going to use this to his advantage and try to kill off the soups that he can with it? I'm not really sure how this is all going to work out, but I really like the way they were able to intertwine what was going on in the show with what's going on in The Boys. I thought they did a really good job of just seamlessly in integrating both of those characters in there but never having them you know never having them overtake uh the focus of the show I, I thought they did a really good job with that but also like I said both ushering us into a new season of this show but also perfectly uh giving us a bigger picture of what the boys season four might look like so a lot to really like about the show, like I said. I think there's a lot of things it does do really well. Um, I already talked about the action sequences and how there's actually more in this show than I think we've gotten in The Boys Combined, and I think all the action sequences here are great, you know, what we got in the finale. But also, the uh, the, the other scene that really sticks out to me is the scene in episode 4 where Sam is going after um, the doctor, and it seems like he's going to uh, kill him and his family, and they have to stop him from doing so. All of that was so well handled, and I really just love the way that scene was done. The scene episode, you know, action episode one as well. All the action is phenomenal in this show, and really just they go all out in terms of uh, the action sequences here. Um, I really enjoy the social commentary in the show and things like that. And the characters, again, I just felt really connected to. There really are only a few things that do bring this down, and really my biggest issue, I would say, throughout this show is that while I do think for the most part this season is well paced. The last two episodes do feel a bit rushed, and I think the reasoning for this is because episodes five and six are both really great episodes, episode five being my favorite of the season. 
but they kind of slow things down a bit because we need to get some big revelations of what's going down when it comes to Kate's past, when it comes to these characters blocking out, and because of that, it sacrifices some character development we needed for, you know, uh, some of the uh, storylines we were doing here. For two characters in particular, I just didn't feel as connected to. Andre, as a character, um, I think is severely underwritten this season. He has some really good moments. I like what they do with... Ever I like every everything they do with him being this friend to Luke. I like that we find out that he was, um, you know, that he was cheat, that uh, he was uh, having this uh, affair with Kate the entire time and they had this bond, but that relationship feels very underwritten. I never really bought into what they were doing with them. I thought we needed more scenes with Andre and Kate together. But the part of the show I really want to see more of is everything with him and his father, uh, Polarity. I just didn't feel they touched upon that enough. Uh, we get some good scenes with Polarity and him kind of warning Andre of the path he's going down and kind of uh, giving him a sense of like what he wants him to do and not wanting him to go down you know, the path that he's going. But other than that, I just felt like when we got to the moments where we find out that polarity is, uh, you know, is is being affected by, uh, you know, his powers and things like that, and that if Andre uses his powers too much, it's going to end up uh, severely hurting him health wise. I just felt didn't feel as connected. I didn't feel as invested emotionally. And I think they needed to have a bit more scenes between Polarity and Andre. And the unfortunate thing is there's not really much they're going to be able to improve upon that because Chance Perdermo is no longer with us. And he is fantastic in the show. And it really sucks because I think he had a very long and bright future ahead of him as an actor. I think not just in this show, but in other projects, he really just showed the potential he had as an actor. Um, but because of that, you know, they already said that Andre, they're not going to include him in the rest of this show. They're not going to recast his character or anything, which I understand. I think that's the most respectful way to go about it is honor his legacy. And obviously they didn't know what was going to happen. It's just unfortunate that I felt that there was a lot more they could have done with this character. And now I'm not really sure. I will still have polarity and I'm not really sure if they're going to use, you know, do anything with that storyline. But I guess we'll just have to see the way they they do things in season two because that was the one character I just felt very underwhelmed by with what they ended up doing with him. I felt there was a lot more potential with him overall. Um, hi, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, redo what I said in this next part just because I wasn't really a fan of how I phrased it and don't think I explained it well. But uh, in regards to Jordan as a character, I really liked them at first. I really like this power that they have that they can switch back and forth between, between being a boy and a girl um, because that's how they feel. They're very fluid in that way and things like that. And it kind of lets them not be confined to one. They can be whatever they you know they can be whatever they want i think that's really great i love the scene between jordan and their and you know their father we find that their father is this you know bigoted asshole that just wants them to be a boy and doesn't understand anything about them or why they've changed and they try to you know get him to understand that like they're still the same you know they're still the same person they're just you know, this is who they are and they need to accept that. I thought that was really good. My issue is when it came to Marie and Jordan's relationship, once the two of them got together, first of all, I found it to be kind of rushed. I don't think they dived into it enough. Two, after they get together, Jordan just kind of stops having a storyline on this show. And I was a little disappointed by that because I really liked at first this idea of Marie taking the credit from Jordan and then giving Jordan that credit. I wanted to see how Jordan deals with that. How does Jordan react to now being the hero? How does Jordan react to the fact that now, you know, they are the one that actually stopped Golden Boy? Are people embracing them for it or are people going to ignore it because it doesn't fit into their narrative? You know, there's a point in this in the show where we kind of, and we've seen this throughout both the boys and Gen V, where we just see that Vought has their own way of looking at things, and I think it would have been interesting if we kind of got this idea that, like, 
Jordan wasn't taken seriously, um, or, you know, it's, they would prefer for Marie to be the hero, like, I think there was more they could have done with that arc overall for Jordan, but like I said, once Jordan and Marie get together, Jordan really is just someone that is very powerful, and someone that is just a really good friend to all the characters in the show, it didn't feel like Jordan had an arc of their own, and that was disappointing to me. I wanted to see more of that character. So I'm hoping that in season two, we delve a lot deeper into them overall, because I really like them in the show. I just felt like there was a lot more potential for stuff they could have done with them as a character. And because we focused a lot on the mystery, uh, we just didn't really get that from Jordan this season. So again, I just, that's a character I hope they do a lot more work with in season two, but also further developing the relationship between them and Marie. Uh, I think they can do some really great work with Jordan moving forward. So I'm really excited to see what they do with, uh, with that character moving forward and hopefully is stronger than what we got here. And then my only other issue with this season, I would say, is that I think they do make good use of the boys overall. But I think they waited a little bit too late to integrate most of the characters. We do get Ashley in episode two, but for the most part, this does kind of stand out as its own show. And then in the last two episodes, they try to incorporate it in the larger narrative of things. And I feel like they could have been doing both simultaneously throughout this show because there are times where they will show a familiar character, like when they're showing Newman, for example, and it just feels a bit jarring because we haven't seen this character in this show until this point, and I hope we're able to get more of that uh, through both the boys, but also in Gen V, and the issue is that because they do incorporate these characters, a lot of these arcs just don't feel that complete. It doesn't feel like we have a character going from point A to point B, Emma's arc kind of put on the back burner, uh, you know, Marie's arc kind of, she kind of has an arc where now she's realizing that she just needs to be a good person, she doesn't always need to save people, she doesn't always need to, you know, um, you know, she doesn't always need to be the hero, uh, she can sometimes just do what she thinks is the right thing to do, um, and that's okay, and it doesn't really matter, uh, you know, and, and her sister's going to care about her no matter what, um, but I just think that because they started to lean more heavily into the boys, it didn't get away from the premise of the show, but it did feel more like, all right, let's also incorporate this into another show versus let's also, you know, close this season out in the most satisfying way possible. I don't know if this season ended in the best possible way it could have. I think there were some really great moments, but there were some things that just felt a tad underwritten by the end. And I think if they would have done it, I think if they would have maybe introduce some elements from the boys earlier on I think it just would have felt a little bit more fluid because as much as I enjoyed seeing Butcher and Homelander and things like that um it just felt a little bit out of nowhere to me where I think again if they had kind of hinted at it throughout the season which they do they reference these characters and things like that I think the thing was again I just felt so invested with what was going on um I just felt like they could have done a better... I, I I was just so invested in the main story that was going on that any time they cut back to the boys, uh, it just kind of... Not took me out of it, but it was just something I wanted a little bit more from. I think there were some things... They, they made great use out of some characters. Like, what they did with Soldier Boy, I thought was really funny. Um, I enjoyed what they... Everything they did with Ashley, I thought was great. Newman is the character I thought they could have done a lot more with because we find out she actually has the same power as Marie, and I thought there was more they could have... Uh, done with that, but they lean more heavily into the bond between Marie and Shetty, which is obviously more important for this season, but I'm hoping, uh, especially knowing that some of these characters are going to be in the boys season four, maybe Marie can make some kind of appearance on there. I think we're only going to see Sam and Kate, but we'll have to see how that all ends up turning out. Overall, though, I think if you're looking for a show that is just a perfect example of how to take an already really great show and expand upon it, but also doing your own thing and kind of ushering in a new audience and introducing us to some really new compelling characters, I think Gen V is just a perfect example of how to do that. This is a show that, for the most part, fully is able to stand out on its own. It leans heavier into some aspects that we've seen in the boys, like having all these different powers, but also getting to lean more more into the idea of how these soups view the seven how are they perceived how does that affect these characters what are these what is really what are, what is um 
you know, what is the effect of these characters having this powers? Does it help them or does it hurt them? Uh, leaning into other social commentary that we have throughout the season, I thought they did a really good job with, but also incorporating El incorporating characters from the boys that we've seen before, but not doing it in a way that overtook what was going on. Uh, you know, also diving deeper into the more, you know, gross out moments and things like that, um, but also having this more mystery sort of feel to it that really just does a great job of making the show stand out on its own while also paying tribute to what's come before and finding a way to connect it seamlessly to what's happening. I thought they did a really great job with all of that. So overall, I really do enjoy this show. I'm really excited to see what lies in store moving forward. I think there's a lot of uh, directions that the show can go in and I'm really interested in seeing what they end up doing. But also the way, like I said, they tie everything into season four Um it has me just really excited to see how they're able to expand this property. I think it's great that they already know The Boys is ending, but now having Gen V and that also being a success, it really has me hopeful that whatever stories they're telling moving forward in this universe, they're going to be worthwhile ones to watch. And I think this is just a really great example of what else we can get uh, from this from this franchise overall and what this can really become. Uh, Amazon is really just kind of becoming the hub for superhero shows right now and Gen V just kind of uh, continues that trend in a really great way. While I don't think it hits... It, while, while I don't think it's quite on the level of the boys, and I do think there are some things that do uh, bring the season down uh, quite a bit, I think for what this really is, it really has... It just shows a lot of potential. It dives into some directions that I really didn't think was going to go. It's wholly unpredictable throughout, and it ends in a way that really just has me very excited to see how it's going to go. So overall, I really enjoyed this season, and I am going to give Gen the season one overall a B plus. Well, other than that, guys, my review of both The Boys Season 3 and Gen V. Very excited that I was able to review both of these shows. And don't worry, moving forward, Boys Season 4 will be weekly coverage. You have heard it here first. I will make sure that is happening. I am so excited to see how Season 4 ends up going, especially having watched both of these shows. Uh, I cannot wait to see the directions they end up taking the show in. I think it's going to be a truly wild season, but one I am very much hyped for. Uh, but other than that, that's it for my review. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll see you guys in in my next video and we'll see you guys for that. Okay, bye. Don't worry about your